Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, if you're watching this video, you've probably got an Oxbridge Maths interview coming up. And yeah, it, it's scary, it's a pretty big deal, and it's something you've probably been working up to for your whole maths journey so far. But today, I wanted to try and demystify what the interview process is actually like, what the interviewers are actually looking for, and give you the best advice that I can on how best to prepare for it. Now this advice will be applicable whether you're doing a maths degree or any other STEM degree. Think of the likes of physics, chemistry, engineering, anything with a maths component to it, this video will help for. Now if you want to see what some of the interview questions look like, I've recently done a few on my channel so I'll link them up above and you can go have a look. But if you're ready, let's get into it with what the interviews actually look like. Well, at Oxford you typically have two to three interviews, generally with two at one college and a third one at a second college and they're typically a bit short, they're about 25 minutes each. Whereas the likes of Cambridge, you generally only have two interviews for one single college, and they're typically a little bit longer, think 30 to 40 minutes. And some Cambridge colleges actually make you sit a test either earlier in the day or the night before, so that they can go through your answers in the interview itself. Normally you'll have one interview focused on pure maths and the other one will be focused on applied maths, but they don't have to stick to this, could vary from college to college. And now as of this year, Oxford interviews are completely online, whereas Cambridge offer both online and in-person interviews depending on both the college and your location. Okay, so what actually happens when you step into that interview? Well, first off, don't expect much based on your personal statement. They're not gonna ask about all the extracurriculars you did. They might ask some bits based on the maths that you wrote, maybe an interesting book, but it's gonna be very little. Most of the interview will focus on the maths. Now, during the interview, you get different problems or different topics to discuss. It's generally something based on stuff you already know, and then they're gonna ask you to apply it to either a new situation or a new kind of puzzle. The idea here is to start off easier and then see how well you cope, and then they're gonna increase the difficulty until you start to struggle. Then they want to see how you struggle with the problem. Are you able to use what you know and apply it to this completely new, more difficult idea? Now, here's the key thing that so, so many people misunderstand. These interviews are not exams. It's really crucial you understand this. Because this is what interviews are there for. There is no point in them just setting you questions and expecting you to get the right answer straight away every time. They will, might as well just set another exam for that. At Cambridge they do, it's called STEP. Instead, you want to be thinking about these interviews more as a conversation. The interviewers want to see what your mathematical thinking is, how well you learn, and then when they give you hints, how can you take those hints on board and apply them to the situation? Because this is essentially exactly what a supervision or tutorial, if you're at Oxford, is going to be like. Right, so now that you know what the interview actually is, let's talk about what the interviewers are actually looking for. Well, there's two main things, mathematical thinking and communication skills. Okay, so let's start with the one that mathematicians are notoriously bad at, communication. Clear communication is really important for the Oxford interview. Remember, we're thinking about it like a conversation. If you're not speaking in a conversation, you're not communicating very well. So you want to be able to explain your reasoning really well. So how can we make a little bit of a plan on how to do that? Well, there's a few steps. Number one, at the start, take your time to really sit and think. Don't just rush in. If you know you need to start with differentiation, that, that's fine, but think about a more long-term plan. Where are you going with this question? And second, if you, anything is confusing, ask questions, that's perfectly fine. Just don't sit there in silence and try and guess at what you think is the right answer. They want to see your reasoning and understanding of the problem about what you do know and what you don't know. Okay, so third, and most crucially, when you have an idea, talk it through first. Explain what your ideas are to the interviewer, what you're gonna do, and just give them a bit of a quick summary, as though you're giving them a plan of what you're gonna do for the next five to 10 minutes. Just don't jump in there straight with calculations without really explaining what your reasoning is. It's never a good way to tackle problems. Even in A-level, step, or the interview itself, take a breath, make a plan, look long-term, look at the full question, Make sure you know where you're going with it. And fourth, keep an eye on their reaction. If they're asking you some questions, maybe think why they're asking those questions. What are they trying to get at? They're probably leading you somewhere with those questions, so try and have a good think about what they're doing. Okay, so how can we practice these four steps? Well, there's two ways. I'll be honest, both are pretty awkward, but once you get over the awkward barrier, it is so beneficial to do these. Method one is just pick a hard step or MAT problem and then find a friend, a friend who's somewhat good at maths up to at least an A-level standard, and then explain your reasoning for the answer. Don't just jump in and do all the work, explain what your plan is for the question. 
see if they can understand what you're going to do with the question and make sure that they ask you as many clarifying questions as they need. This really forces you to explain your thinking and explain what your ideas are for the problem. And now method two isn't that different from method one, but if you don't feel comfortable doing it with a friend, instead do what I do and film yourself. I know it's awkward as hell, I do it way too often now and I still find it a little bit awkward every time I do. But one thing it really has taught me is to better explain my thought process, especially when I'm doing complicated maths like the step videos. So although it is really awkward, it will help you so, so much with better communication. Just make sure you review the things you've filmed. Okay, so moving on to the second thing that interviews are looking for, and that is mathematical thinking. So something you really need to know about your interview is that it is intentionally going to be hard for you, no matter who you are, that is the point. If you find the first question super, super easy, they're just gonna step up the next question to be way more difficult. That's because they're not trying to test how much you know. Instead, they're trying to test your ability to learn. So they're trying to understand how can you apply your mathematical intuition and thought process to a completely new problem. What patterns can you spot? What cases can you have a look at? How do you think about the problem? How does your brain work? It's essentially what they're trying to understand. Now, the key here is to keep talking, be persistent with the problem, and be open to nudges and hints from the interviewer. The interviewers know that you're not gonna be able to solve every question instantly. Be no point in an interview in that way. What matters is that you keep trying and show how you're gonna tackle if you hit one of those dead ends. If you get stuck, that, that's perfectly fine. Explain why you're stuck, what didn't work, and what you're thinking to do next. What did that thing that didn't work teach you about the problem? The interviewers don't really care too much about you being wrong. It's about how you respond to it, how you try something else, and how you can take advice from them. Just make sure you pause, take it on board, spend some time thinking about it. This is really key because it's gonna tell the interviewer that you're able to listen, learn, and take on new things in a supervision when you're actually at university. Okay, so one more thing that's pretty important, but probably out of the three things that I've listed, probably the least important, is trying to show genuine interest in the problems that you've been set. Now, it's gonna sound really harsh, but if you don't find genuine interest in any of these problems, an Oxbridge Mastery probably isn't for you. The whole degree is gonna be filled with problems that you're gonna find difficult, annoying, stressful, but you still need to try and enjoy them. If you're not enjoying it, Mastery is not for you. But on the other hand, if you do have that interest, make sure you're showing it. Generally mathematicians, quite shy, quite introverted, they might always, not always show that interest. So what you wanna do is try and keep upbeat and look interested in the problems, especially the ones that you are genuinely finding interesting. Okay, so how do you actually prepare academically for this interview? Well, first things first, review the A-level syllabus. You should have a really good grasp on this. So that's both normal maths and further maths. If you put it on your personal statement, they can ask you about it. So you need to have that prepared. Now, a really, really important note here is don't, and I mean do not, go looking at university maths. I've known people who've done this, they've been preparing loads of university maths stuff and then it's all A-level topics and they've kind of forgot all their A-level stuff and it's a little bit difficult. So if you've already started looking at partial differential equations, put the book down and go back to your A-level syllabus. No interview question will require university level maths. Okay, so when it comes to wanting to practice, there's actually lots of resources out there for you to use. Most of them are based on either puzzles or logical reasoning. And they should give you a pretty good idea of what to expect in your interview. I'll link some in the description below, but some of the places you can look are the STEP and MAT papers. Some of them are quite similar to what you might get in an interview. And then another good resource is actually the UK MT Olympiad question. Now your interview questions might be a bit more fleshed out than them, but they're very similar and they give you a good idea of that logical reasoning that you'll need when it comes to the interview. And there's a book called Advanced Problems in Mathematics by Stephen Siklos. It gives you a good idea of the reasoning you should be going through and it kind of explains how you should be piecing your arguments together, which is really good for interview prep. So have a look at that, I'll link it below. There's also a lot of other videos out there that go through past interviews, both from the university itself and then the individual colleges. However, before you jump straight into solving every single problem, please change how you think about it. You wanna be focusing on your communication. So go into it thinking, how can I best communicate my ideas? Can you summarize and say aloud your ideas before jumping straight into the problem? Focus on communication and logical reasoning before you think about having the perfect algebra and the perfect solution. In an interview, 
perfect algebra doesn't really matter. So we've talked about what the interview actually is, what they're looking for, and then how to prepare academically. But then how should you prepare your mindset? Well, first off, try and be yourself and stay calm. Again, as I said a few times already, think of it more as a friendly conversation. That's the whole point. The interviews are generally normal people and they're pretty down to earth. So they more want to have a friendly discussion about some interesting mathematics. Now they know you're going to be nervous. It's quite natural to be nervous in this kind of situation. They're kind of expecting that. So don't worry if you're too nervous. But if you can try and be calm, it just helps make communication a lot more easier when you get into the interview. Now, something mathematicians often do, again, find hard, is admitting what you don't know. Now, we will all get to that point, and you will get to that point in your interview, when you hit something that you're not quite sure about. And then you're sometimes just not sure about what you're missing from the question. You're missing a key bit of information that you can't understand. But honestly, it's fine to say that. You can say that aloud to your interviewer. When something's unfamiliar, just talk about it. Talk about your ideas so far, ask for a bit of advice from your interviewers, and then try and stay curious and take on board what they've said, have a little bit of think about it, and then see if you can use it in the question. Interviewers generally won't penalise you for not knowing how to go forward. That's generally what exams are there for. Again, it's an interview, not an exam. Instead, they're gonna guide you through these new ideas. They're only really gonna hold it against you if you're sat there in silence, crawling away, not listening to any of their advice and just doing your own thing, not talking at all. And again, following that, you want to be talking throughout the interview. As Soon as you start the problem, you're giving your summary to say what you're gonna do, but then keep talking as you go through each step. Talk about what you think you're gonna do next, what happened in that last bit of calculations, see if everything's neatening up, is it getting worse? This lets the interviewer see how you think, not just are you getting the algebra right, but are you thinking and considering the right things? And by talking aloud constantly, it allows the interviewer to see when you're on track or when you're not. They can then give you hints that nudge you back onto track. It's really important, it's all about that communication here. Okay, so a bit of a newer thing here is about the tech that they're gonna use. Now, since a lot of the interviews are now online, you're gonna to have to use tech a lot more. But please don't worry about the tech sides too much. Issues are super common, it's kind of just expected now. That's fine, your interviewers know this and they will wait for you if you're having any connection issues or anything. And then even if it's going horrifically bad, they're fully prepared to fully rearrange the interview if necessary. But having said that, you don't want to get to that point. That's the worst case scenario. So if we can do things that prepare us so that we can have the best experience possible, that will make the interview so much better. It will reduce all that stress that we don't want. Because it can be really stressful if things go wrong, especially in such an important interview. So just make sure you set up somewhere quiet where there's nobody around with some good Wi-Fi and possibly a power supply if you're using something like a laptop. And a bit of an extra tip, make sure you have your phone and your email accessible somewhere, as well as the college slash interviewers phone number and email, so that if, say, your Wi-Fi does go out and you can't connect, you can give them a quick ring and tell them, oh, really sorry, can't really connect. Please can we rearrange? Just alleviates that stress and gives you a bit of a contingency plan just in case things go wrong. Now, some more specific maths advice is that you're probably gonna have to write during your interview. Oxford and Cambridge generally use stuff like, be thinking likes of Zoom's whiteboard. But now it's really useful to practice writing on one of these whiteboards. In general, if you have like a stylus or a tablet, it can be somewhat easier because you can write on that. Now, if you don't have one, ask your school or college if they can, if you can borrow one for the interview, or if not, practice using a touchpad or a mouse on your laptop, just so you've got a bit of practice beforehand. It's really good to practice so that your handwriting doesn't look really bad when it comes to showing it on screen. There's nothing worse than having to apologize every two minutes for bad handwriting because you're trying to use a mouse on a screen. So just having that bit of practice makes it a lot more easier. You get used to some of the extra buttons that you don't have generally on pen and paper. Now, the second thing is all about communication. Now, this can be really hard when you're doing it on video because when you're writing something and you say, oh, that equation, it's not super obvious to the interviewer which equation you're talking about or which graph or which point on a graph, anything like that. We want to be really specific. So if it helps, you can either highlight it on the screen or you can label things. So if it's an equation, you can label it with an asterisk or you can label it with numbers. Um, and then if it's points, label them with letters. This point A, point B, point C. Avoid just saying this equation or that point. Interviewers can't see what you're talking about and it becomes very confusing. So try and be very specific, either through highlighting or by labeling things pretty well. 
Okay, so a bit more of a college specific advice won't be applicable to everyone, but some colleges make you do a test beforehand. It is generally in the vein of like a team you kind of test, multiple choice normally, but they normally ask you to sit it either the night before or earlier on in the day, and then they'll get you to talk about it in your interview. But now what can be really useful is if you do get that test and you get some answers wrong or you're not sure about some, try and remember what the questions were and review them afterwards. You'll normally have a bit of a break between the two. So review them and then if they do come up in your interview, you've already got the answers prepared, you can go through it with them. And it just makes sure that you're looking like you're really thinking about these problems. It's one thing that happened to me and I'm really glad that I went through my problems the night before. So a big piece of advice here is try and do mock interviews. Now, most schools, colleges should organize you a mock interview, but if they don't, be prepared to set up your own. And you wanna be simulating the interview as closely as possible. So ask a teacher, mentor, or just a parent. Generally, someone who understands maths up until like an A-level degree would be pretty useful. And then try and get them to pose an unfamiliar question to you. So generally think about like a hard, an old step or MAT problem, or find some interview questions online. And then get them to harshly critique any explanation you give. Get them to ask a load of clarifying questions to the point at which they fully understand what you're going to do. Doing this again gets you in that mode of communicating your idea as well. Nothing beats getting into that situation where you're doing a mock interview. So try and do as many as possible. Try and convince as many teachers as you can to give you a bit of a mock interview. And my advice for this is when you do get a mock interview, try and film it. Filming it is a really good way to review it later on. It allows you to reflect on what you did in that interview. What went well and what just didn't. Did you speak clearly enough? Did you get really awkward and shy? Did you uh, get flustered if you didn't know something? Were you able to take advice on from whoever was interviewing you? And then doing this repetitive thing of interview, reflect, interview, reflect should help practice and build your confidence for these interviews. Okay, so that's pretty much the best advice I can give you for this interview process. If I was to sum it up in one sentence, I would say, think of it like a friendly conversation. It's not an exam. So before the interview, just keep practicing that communication skills. You've got an interview, you're probably pretty good at maths, but now you need to practice communicating well. It's a skill that's useful for both the interview and life in general. Now, I'm wishing you the best of luck for those interviews. And if you found this video helpful, please drop a like and subscribe. I'll be bringing more out in preparation for STEP and university maths. And please drop a comment below if you've got any more questions on the interview process. I'll try and answer as many as I can. And then once the interviews are done, drop a comment and let me know how they went, what went well, what didn't, what do you think could have been improved. And thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.